Defence Minister Richard Miles and Foreign Minister Penny Wong are in New York for meetings with their American counterparts, followed by Washington, D.C. And then they're off to Tokyo for high-level talks where they are expected to discuss the potential for deeper engagements between Japan and AUKUS. Joining me now is Japan's ambassador to Australia, Shingo Yamagami. Ambassador, thanks for your time. Later in the week, we will see the two plus two talks mm -hmm. between Australia's defence and foreign ministers and the Japanese counterparts. How important is that dialogue? Well, thank you. No, thank you, Kiran, for having me. How important? Uh, very important. Two reasons. First, you know, this is the first you know, two plus two after Prime Minister Kishida of Japan, Prime Minister Albanese of Australia came up with this upgraded joint declaration on security cooperation. This was in October. And as a follow-up to these two leaders' you know, agreement, this is a great opportunity to make a follow-up and some specific you know, details about our arrangement. That's reason number one. Reason number two is you know, this 2 plus 2 between Japan and Australia will take place right after the 2 plus 2 between Australia and the United States, back to back, so to speak. This means, you know, this is a great opportunity to reinforce trilateral cooperation among Australia, US and Japan. You, you mentioned that meeting between Prime Minister Albanese and his Japanese counterpart, uh, Prime Minister Kishida, that was in October of this year. Yes. And they, they signed a joint declaration mm -hmm. on security, mm. which you alluded to. But So what more can be done to expand and strengthen that cooperation, as you spoke about? Is a, is a more formal alliance among the things that can be considered? First of all, you know, uh, the first, you know, joint declaration on security cooperation between Japan and Australia was made back in 2007. So 15 years have since, and during this time, there have been a number of you know, strategic you know, transformations throughout the Indo-Pacific you know, region. For example, you know, China's official you know, defense budget more than quadrupled during these 15 years, and you know, intrusion into territorial waters around the Japanese islands of Senkaku intensified both in quantity and quality, and then we are now seeing that you know, DPRK, North Korea, launching you know, dozens of you know, missiles into the seas around Japan or sometimes over the Japanese territory. So in light of this you know, deteriorating security environment, uh, there is a lot you know, countries like you know, Australia, Japan, you know, US and Japan can do in terms of maintain peace and stability throughout the Indo-Pacific. So for example, you know, we can enhance our interoperability, and we can increase the occasion to exchange, you know, strategic assessments, you know, including contingency, you know, consultations. So these are some of the specifics, you know, two ministers, you know, can discuss in Tokyo. We have discussed it previously, uh, the, the Japanese view when it comes to AUKUS. What prospects are there? And, and do these talks this week mean greater prospects for a Japanese involvement with AUKUS? Uh, obviously, Japan shares a similar vision to mm -hmm. what AUKUS is, is all about. You are quite right, you know, when it comes to sharing, you know, basic values and strategic interest, you know, Japan is closely aligned with, you know, three members of AUKUS. And Japan was the first country to express, you know, its welcome, you know, as to the creation of AUKUS. That said, you know, Japan is not a member uh, so what we can do is, you know, first stage, you know, you would like to focus on the development of nuclear power submarines for Australia. But when it comes to second stage or, you know, stages after that, we're going to, you know, discuss, you know, issues like, you know, uh, artificial intelligence, you know, quantum technology, undersea capabilities, hypersonic capabilities. Uh, when it comes to those specific projects, you know, Japan's, you know, Japan stands ready to extend our cooperation to members of AUKUS. This week, we've got a number of MPs in Taiwan, mm. including uh, Barnaby Joyce. I spoke to him earlier this afternoon on, on this program. He's in Taipei. Do you see this visit as... Uh, is it a, a welcome thing that the, the Australian MPs engage with Taiwan, or is it counterproductive? Well, uh, let me tell you this, you know, as a long-time you know, observer 
of this you know, relationship you know, across the Taiwan Strait. Uh, this is not something new. We have seen a number of congr you know, congressional delegations you know, visiting Taipei, you know, from Washington DC, from Tokyo, you know, from London, and so on. So that's, you know, this is not something new, and this is not you know, for the sake of you know, recognizing you know, Taiwan uh, a sovereign state. Uh, this is not for the sake of promoting government-to-government -government relationship. But in light of the you know, important fact that Taiwan is a robust democracy of 23 million people, close to the population of Australia, Taiwan makes an important, indispensable part of you know, supply line, supply chain of semiconductors. And there is a lot of issue we have to cooperate you know, with Taiwan including, you know, anti-COVID measures. So I think, uh, you know, uh, hopefully this will make a fruitful trip. So the dialogue is, is, is encouraging. Dialogue is, you know, is important, and this is something, you know, which has been done by Japanese congressional diet, you know, delegations as well. Japanese ambassador to Australia, Shingo Yamagami, thank you as always. I well, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Now